Pablo went to appreciate her, her hard work and positive attitude towards his journey. And uh, I always uh, think about Mamata. I recently see, so I am doing the, her brother, Bajan Her attitude to his life, I think she's a woman of dreams, many, many dreams. When she was a girl, she said she never, she never thought she would be an actress, but she became an actress. But she never gave up. You know, most of the people, they dream, they don't do anything. Yes, she dream. Some people dream, they achieve their dream, then they stop. Oh, we have everything. Car, house, and everything. Then, the third category, they continue to dream. They achieve more. They are the ones who contribute to society. I really think Mamata contributed a lot to society. I really appreciate her hard work and thank you for coming here. So, I would like to thank you all for coming and contributing to this cause. You all know I am in medical field and we all know what Mamata has gone through and that is a real tough journey she went through. She won life. Like she said, she got a second life. After COVID, I think we all got a second life. And we are lucky that we did not get catch, we did not get COVID. But this is a good cause. Aro is working and Mamda is working with them and I'm really very really pleased to see Mamda working with the group and helping all the children with cancer in India who needs the help. Let's all help Aro to achieve their goals and dreams. Thank you. I want all of you to always be grateful to every second of every minute because the, the value of that, I think some people kind of came awake to it during COVID. I think a lot of people, it was a very, you know, it was a revelation in many people's lives. You all started doing things differently and you started realizing that, oh my God, you know what, I have to seize every moment of every day. Um, you know, what was I doing sitting on all that cash that we spend, that we travel and today, you know, today, um, as much as people were scared about COVID for about two years, I think people started getting fears and living like there is no tomorrow, right? So, when you do all this, think about a few people, a few kids who are actually fighting this and having trouble to afford one vial of chemotherapy or one follow-up treatment, one scan, one x-ray. Other than, you know, just getting together, marrying, making more babies, I just don't understand that concept that much. I still feel that there are a lot of children out there who actually need the help. So other than thinking, mine, mine, mine only, think this world is ours. Actually, the world is not I don't think India needs any more Indians. We have many children growing up and also losing lives, unfortunately. Education is another thing that really needs a lot of attention. Population is just so out of control. So you know what? In any small way, while you're so, so far away from home and always think about what's, not just your families back home, but think about the, the larger picture in India. You know, you're all Indians. We're all proud Indians. We're doing so much of work. I mean, I came here to San, I come many times to San Jose, but Every time I come here, I'm always shocked, you know, oh, there are no Caucasians here, it's all Indians or, you know, Asians and, you know, um, every second car. Like, I drive around a lot, so, and, you know, every driver is like an Indian, you know. Um, it happened yesterday, too, I just went to pick up some Japanese food for Indians. You just, need to, you just need to observe, like, which part of India the black person be from, right? So, I also heard from Jitku that if you see a white person, you're like, oh my god, where is this right now? <laughs> So, so, you know, we are doing so much here, forgetting what's actually going on in India. Because why do we all escape? Either you have escaped or your parents have escaped or your grandparents have escaped. Second generation, third generation of Americans now. But there's another world out there. A little bit of your contribution. Um, every week, every month. Put it in a little, you know, um, you know, one of those jars, glass jars. You know, I say, every time you say a bad word, drop a dollar. Right? Every time you think ill about somebody, drop a dollar, punish yourself, but make some money and give that to charity. You know, it's worth it. It's so worth it. So I really want to thank you all for being here today. 
That's what all the love that you've always been giving me. Um, I really wish my, my voice was good because I would have said a lot more. Do all of you know me? Always, you know, just knowing me. I don't know how many of you really know me. You all here to just really know me today, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You really know me. Yeah. But then I always say it's not about uh, you know just really knowing me. How many of you know the real me? Right. That's very important. I'm here not as actor or Mohandas or you know um, someone who's famous. I'm here as a humble human being, asking all of you to just connect with those who are actually fighting. Uh, it's not just cancer, but really. Cancer is scary um, once it comes. Like we're talking about childhood cancer today. I have driven, I have, I have taken in so much inspiration from children who actually go through the disease. There's so many kids who are born with it. You know, two or three months after. You see young parents, they're just huh? late twenties, young couples walking around with a baby with tubes and you know, there's multiple tubes and uh, bandages everywhere. Um, it's very sad to see that. And then when the kid gets a little older, they don't have this age bracket, which is a playful age. They have no idea what's happening to them. They sleep after chemo, they sleep for hours, or all day they realize as though they're hungry. When they feel better, they start playing. But the parents, it's really, really weighing down on them. So you know, like you said, you know, thank God that my kids did not get it. It's you. I remember my mom. My mom was praying. My mom was praying to God upon my diagnosis. Couldn't you have given it to me? You know. So every parent, that's how they think. So there are many, many parents out there. Whether you're rich, you're poor, you're um, you're black, you're white, you're a politician, you're a, um, you're in the slums. You know, cancer doesn't know whom they're choosing. You don't choose it, but it can come out to anybody. So it can happen to anyone. So know that there is no um, boundary when it comes to um, fighting this disease. There is no age um, that makes that fight easier. So I think we're all, we're all sitting here, miles and miles away from our home man. And we can say that we're all privileged, right? We don't know what's actually going on in the hospitals in India. We don't know the actual trouble that our kids are going through. The underprivileged are going through so much, which is beyond something that you can fathom. To an extent where, when I used to go in for my chemotherapies, I used to be angered by the lack of system in India. And it is it angers to a, to a point where I think it would stress me so much that I would get a relapse. To be honest, I think for the longest time, I used to tell myself that the more I lived in India, the more number of times I was going to relapse, and that, that kept happening. And it's because I, um, the moment you're carrying cancer in you, um, and you know how difficult the treatment is, um, what happens is you become a chronic empath. And when you become, when you have so much empathy inside you, you start absorbing all the energy that, all the sorry energy that you see around you. And it, it becomes your problem. So I think I connect with um, the cause um, in a much, much greater way. I'm sure there are a lot of people. How many of you actually um, have someone? How many of you have actually um, fought cancer or battled cancer? Do we have any fighters or survivors here? a small number? Okay, it's interesting how small that number is. How many of you have family members, immediate family members fighting cancer? How many of you just know or have heard that someone's dealing with cancer? That basically means that the actual empathy level needs to get better. Their pain needs to become your pain. That's when you will feel like going out of your way to make their problem your problem. So every day, every day, I'm sure all of you are into you know, these newer forms of um, 
you know, following a path, spirituality, you know, we all, um, we all follow something, right? Um, if it's not following someone, you follow something, and that something is your, your inner truth, your purpose in life. So just think that you've parked in the wrong alley, <laughs> where it says no parking. Okay, for that service is done here today. So I know you guys can do great. I know you all have a very, very kind heart, like my trainer always tells me, at least you showed up in gym today. <laughs> yeah, so it's something like that. You've all shown up, which means it's a great start. You all have a good heart. Thank you so much. Um, and I hope um, that I, you know, I know that this is the um, first session of the U.S. chapter, yeah? Um, so I hope um, whoever is part of um, our U.S. chapter, you know, I hope you um, feel very encouraged this evening and uh, you're able to achieve a, a greater milestone. Thank you so much, Biju, for, you know, for um, starting this to begin with, being such an amazing support to your really old friend. Um, be more, <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, because it's it's not easy, because when um, Indra was telling me about doing this event, she told me about how um, simple it's going to be, and how, I said, it's simple, but the cause is not so simple, right? So let's do this, let's make this happen, let's make this a success. Baby steps and Make sure that you always reach out to me and I always want to be a part of this community. I want to check next year who all are present. Because <laughs> um, if you're not there, I want this number to grow. I want the hall to grow, everything to grow. And uh, see, for film awards and all that um, <clears throat> stuff, um, there's so many, um, so many more people. All the pompous and so much money, the sponsorship, God knows. You think it was uh, struggling to get sponsors for this event? Why? Hmm? Even in med I'm sure many of you are like in IT and medical institutions. I know Stanford. You guys get so much, so much money going in. I know even when UCLA, that's where I did my um, immunotherapy. UCLA does all these, you know, um, events and uh, you should see the amount of money that gets poured in. Like it's, it's insane how much money they raise in that one day. Um, obviously, they'll have people like Ryan Cranston and all come and say hello, you know, just his five minutes is enough to make a hundred thousand dollars. So, um, we, can, we can do that too. It's not just them, yeah? Even though our organization is small, but our cause is really, really big. So, make sure that you take all of this while we get here today. Um, you know, tell your friends this was how it was, and it's going to be bigger and better next time. And uh, hopefully, Bindu will be charged for a lot of excess baggage of cash. Your support, um, your zeal, how you um, envision this. I do believe in the fact that um, positivity and the state of mind and how you channel your inner self can actually um, you know, um, create an environment of healing within you. Maybe the disease is not out of you. But the disease will not get you. It will not take the best of you away from you. So that is possible too. But to understand that, I, um, is everyone, are there many Malayalis here? There are a lot of non Malayalis too, right? Right? Yeah, there are a lot of non Malayalis, you can see that. So, you know, um, I always believe that um, it's very important as um, caregivers, if you know anyone who is you know, fighting cancer, um, it's very important for children to get the right kind of care. And I think what is most important is to keep the caregiver's environment very really positive. And most often that's not what we see. We already start assuming that, oh my God, someone's diagnosed with cancer, that person's going to die. Like you already start looking at that person as though that person's like, you know, walking out your front door. But that's not true. You can change that. Your spirit can change that. In fact, you know, I love the changes that has happened the last, over the last decade. I was diagnosed in the year 2009. I fought it for <clears throat> as recent as, the hardest part of it was as recent as 2014. And then, you know, immunotherapy worked for me and that's how I came to Los Angeles and became a resident there. Um, I'm back in India, by the way. <laughs> um, but California is almost my second home. Um, my first home, I would say, in my heart. This is the land that gave me, this is the state that gave me my life back. 
So I owe a lot to California. What changed for me is the environment. So I, I really believe in the power of creating the right environment. It can be mental, it can be, you know, um, but just around you, the physical environment. And no matter how close you think your relationship with that person is, if that entity is toxic for you or for the person who's fighting cancer, save yourself. I would always suggest you keep that person at bay. So um, there's just so much more that I can share. Um, right now, my whatever I'm saying is not being so serious. Usually, this is not how I speak. Once again, thanks a lot for being here. Um, I hope um, some of you who thought that you know I'll just go there and probably take a picture with Mamta as a dinner and go back home. Please do make sure that you know you uh, contribute, make a little contribution today. A little goes a very long way. You know the you know rupees are like going down the drain. A dollar has a lot of value. <laughs> yeah. A dollar and eighty-three rupees for a dollar. It was seventy-two rupees when I came here in 2014. Is it it? Yeah, even less the banker. <laughs> so, even if it's one bill, it has a lot of value back home. It can save so many lives. Please keep watch and subscribe US One TV.